Right, hello. Uh, this is a new devlog for, I think I'm going to start calling it the grappling hook game rather than GHGC because even though it's an acronym it seems to take quite a long time to say <laughs> and you know it has a grappling hook in it now, right? So I can just start saying that. It's the grappling hook game. And here's what the grappling hook game looks like now. It's got a little noise when you grapple onto something and much, much more importantly, the rope wraps around stuff that gets in his way. And even more importantly than that, once it wraps around stuff that gets in its way, it unwraps when it bounces back. <laughs> and my tone of reverence there is born of uh, much frustration and difficulty getting that to work. That's also why it's been a long time since my last video of this, and it's also why I started a whole new game since I last talked about this. Um, so to answer the obvious question, um, I am working on a another game called Heat Signature, which is a top-down space stealth game. And um, the reasonable question is like, well, did you give up the grappling hook game to make that? And the answer is no. And then now that I've gone back to this, the, answer, the question is, mm, did you give up the heat signature to work on this? And the answer is again, no. Basically, I you know, made gunpoint when I was doing another full-time job um, and crammed it to my spare time. I don't want to cram either of these projects entirely into spare time, but I do see the advantage of having regular breaks from a project and from having something else going on that you're kind of working on so that you can kind of work on something when you feel inspired to and you're not sort of obligated to when you know the urge doesn't strike you. So in terms of how I'm dividing my time between this and the space game basically just whenever the urge strikes me to work on one of them I'll work on that one and um, vice versa. And that's working out pretty well like I the thing so the scrapping hook, the last time I showed it, it was kind of working, you could you could swing on it and you could, in particular, you could fall off a building, I'll try and do this now, um, and grapple onto a lamppost and then <laughs> click a menu accidentally. <laughs> I misclick there. Actually, let me maximise this. Um, you could swing off the lamppost and arrive on the other building and it was cool and there was momentum involved and it was already really fun. Um, and the thing I was stuck on was it was pretty easy to make it so that when you latch onto something and the rope hits something as you're swinging, the rope bends. The difficulty was, once it wraps around that thing, it just got stuck to it. So um, this is what I've shown you just now is basically all I've got to show of the kind of um, you know new functional elements. If you're just interested in how the game plays, this is this is it. <laughs> the video ends here. Um, but if you're interested in the technical back end of it, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about now. And I'll show you some of the code as well. Um, so, like, go away if you're bored by that stuff. <laughs> you might notice I just clipped straight through that that little whatever that's supposed to be. I guess it's like a really high lamp post with no stem. Um, I think that's just a speed thing. I think it's just that the collision detection is not that precise in Unity. It kind of only checks it 60 times. I think it only checks it 50 times a second for some reason. I don't know why that is. Um, so if you're going fast and you're moves through something small, sometimes it doesn't notice you've moved through it. Um, I'm not too worried about that yet, that's the thing I can, we can fix later on. But yeah, the how you make a rope detect when it should wrap around something is very simple. It's just, it's checking line of sight to your grappling point. This thing up here, I hope you can see my cursor, um, is my grappling point, my grapple point. Uh, that's where I shot the ceiling. And then the line from me, the player, to that point needs to be clear, and if it's not clear, then the rope needs to wrap around something. Because when I fired the grappling hook, that line was clear, that's why it hit that location and not anywhere sooner. It knows I had clear line of sight at that point. So if at any time the um, code detects that we've lost line of sight, it knows we need to bend the rope around something. And that's actually pretty easy to do, it's just like, you cast a ray from the player to this thing, uh, to the grapple point, and there's an easy function to say, tell me the soonest point that the ray hits something and then you can get that variable. The tricky thing is <laughs> that is the point at which um, the ray is already being blocked. So I thought okay what you do it's, uh, is you create a new grapple point there. So I'll show you the code for it. It is, let's go into grappling hook, that's where all the code is stored for this. Basically there's a bit of code that checks that you've got a line of sight. Um, so if grapple deployed, that's when we are swinging from something. Um, we create a variable called grapple sight lost, and this is the if statement that says if we have lost 
site to it. And within that, it's got a little thing that says out grapple site lost, and that is the um, uh, special thing called a raycast hit, which is a point of impact. It has all the information about where we hit, what we hit. So what we do there is we, we find the point that we that we lost line of sight, and we create a new grapple there, because we've got line of sight to that, right? That's the place we do we do see, and it, hopefully it'll be a perfect apex point between us. Um, we can see that, and that can see the original anchor point. So we create a new like joint in the rope, and then the rope can bend around like that. That all seems really logical, <laughs> and it seems like it should work perfectly. The problem is that um, you create a new grapple point at the point that you lost line of sight. Now, all you know about the point that you lost line of sight is that you don't have line of sight to it. It's like one pixel or one atom or one of the smallest units that you can handle um, too far into the solid object. So what happened when I did that was I created a grapple point there, and the code just repeatedly created new grapple points. Just, it just created 60 grapple points a second in that area because it kept saying, oh no, I still don't have line of sight. Better create one at the point I lost line of sight. Oh no, I still can't see it. Better create one where I lost line of sight. That was a goddamn nightmare <laughs> because all of the logical ways of, you know, obviously the the logical solution is let's just make the grapple point a bit closer to me than that. Let's, you know, find that point that we lost line of sight and then move it a little bit closer to me. That creates a nightmarish web of spiders. <laughs> it's horrific. Like, ropes exploded in all directions. They smother the map. It was disgusting. <laughs> so that's not the answer. The answer involves, like, sort of, like, actually detecting what object you hit and then moving the grapple point kind of away from its center so that you're really you're really creating grapples around a slightly larger object that's invisible and doesn't collide with anything. It's weird and, and um, annoying and took ages to fix. But <laughs> that's still part of the easy part, which is just wrapping around things. The really tricky part is how do you know when to unwrap? So when you bend like this, it's creating a new grapple point there. So really effectively I'm just swinging from this brown bit as if I fired the grappling hook straight onto that in the first place. And the line that you see going from there to the original grapple point that's just a static line, it's not really doing anything. Um, so once you get once you create that grapple point, when do you know how do you know when to destroy it and create a new straight line back to the original grapple point? And you'd think if you create that grapple point when you lose line of sight to your original one, then the time to reform the original line is when you get line of sight back. Right? That makes sense. But there's a problem with that, and that's when you are this side of something, and you bend like that. When I bend like that, I'm only making one new grapple point, and as I swing past the brown thing, I suddenly regain line of sight to the original grapple point, depending on how fast you're swinging, of course. Right now it's, it's slowing down, so I'm not quite getting line of sight now. But if I go a bit faster than you, I do. And that's a huge problem because then it says, oh, I've got line of sight to my original grapple point, better create the original rope, and just creates a new rope along here, <laughs> which is terrible. So basically, as you swing past it, it goes like that, <laughs> without you re-grappling. And that's a big problem. And the I thought the solution to that would be like, okay, so between, between the, like, the joint that we've created and the new line that we want to make, to the old grapple point, we could check the collision for all those spaces in between. And that seemed pretty logical, and it? it's kind of the sort of true way of doing it. <laughs> like, I feel like that's as close to real physics as you'd get, but it doesn't work at all. <laughs> it's again, it's just a horrible nightmare. Like, a lot of the difficulty with Unity seems to be like, there's a hundred ways of doing any given thing, and sort of 75 of them just flat out won't work. Just the, the code is logical and it seems to make sense, but just the result is just a chaotic, horrific mess that just has no relation to what you're trying to do. So that's where I got stuck, and that's when I started making a new game, because I was bored of that and it was irritating. Um, I got to the point where I spent like three days trying to get a rope to unwrap a from around a lamppost and decided that there were other things I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> Um, but I'm still like I'm really really excited about this game. This game is the one that's um, uh, that's going to be it's going to be much better than Heat Signature when it's done. <laughs> if both of them go reasonably well, this one will be much much better. Uh, but it's a much more ambitious project as well. It's like it's a bigger project than Gunpoint, whereas Heat Signature might be a smaller project than Gunpoint. Um, so I was frustrated that it was taking me so long to get the things to unwrap 
and I took a long break from it and when I came back to it I started to think about like is there an easier way to detect when a rope should straighten? It's bent now, it should straighten now. It should bend now, and now it should straighten. <laughs> what is, how can we define that moment without also accidentally including this moment when it's bent past something? And really it seems like there's a clear difference, isn't there? Like in this one, the rope is really bent, and this one it's not bent at all. So even before you remove the anchor point, there's a time when this, the smaller, swinging joint thing, the smaller section of the rope, is the same angle as the one we're originally swinging from. So what I do now is when we create a grapple point here, I'll go to the function that does that, um, it finds the point to create it at, it finds a vector to that and it moves the um, moves the point we're going to create the grapple a little way away from the object that we're actually going to grapple onto because, that we're going to wrap around, sorry um, because we don't want it to be embedded in the object and then uh, all of the joints in the rope, all of the things it's bending around are in this array called rope point and what we do with that is we also store whether the new angle the new section of the rope we're making is further clockwise than the old angle. So in that example just now, swing like this, say that's, um, what is that, I'm not very good at analog clocks, but that's about 5 p.m. right, that kind of angle, and then if we swing way past it then we might be uh, closer to like 4 p.m. so that's we're further anti-clockwise. So all we do is every time we create a new joint in the rope we remember was it going kind of anti-clockwise or was it going clockwise relative to the other rope. And then we constantly look at our angle and say are we currently more clockwise than the original one or are we currently more anti-clockwise. In other words we just check have we kind of gone past that original trajectory, that original vector of that line. And if, we, if we're now the other side of it than we were when we formed this joint we know we should unform that joint always. So it just stores a bunch of things that just say true, false, true, false, false, true. And then while we are swinging, there's a bit of code um, up here. This is a bit of code that detects when we've lost line of sight and when we should create a new grapple. And then this is a bit of code that detects when we can re-straighten the rope and remove something. So this says, if the angle between this and the previous rope is positive, i.e. this section of the rope and the other section of the rope, is positive. And when we created this kink in the rope, this bend, it wasn't positive, or the other way around, if these two things just aren't equal, then we know the rope is bending in the opposite direction to the kind of bend we formed this joint for. <laughs> Which is, it sounds complicated, it just means we're bending in the other direction. And so we know we've gone past the point where we, that we were trying to bend around in the first place, therefore we're allowed to straighten it out again. And then this bit of code just says, delete the grapple point we made, um, set the new grapple point to be the old one and then just adjust the length of the rope. And this little thing here is uh, telling it how long the rope should be. It's also inheriting any slack that we had before um, because now, awesome new feature, <laughs> uh, previously the rope was completely rigid. Now if you shoot a grapple down at the, gr at the ground it doesn't do you any good at all. <laughs> it doesn't affect your trajectory in the least because it's a slack rope, right? It wouldn't actually help you to shoot your grappling hook at the ground as you're falling. Um, it doesn't kind of coil up or kind of uh, like hang down in a loop. Uh, I don't really care about that. I, we can do some kind of like basic visual trickery to make it look like it is, but the important thing is it shouldn't stop your fall, and it doesn't. And if you... Um, let's try and like pull myself up, then attach onto the side building, and then as soon as I do I'm going to try and pay out the rope to push myself away from it which used to work, that used to be a way of like propelling yourself in midair, and now, no effect. <laughs> Except that when I do hang down, I hang down much lower than the, rope, the, the length of the rope seemed to indicate, and that's because we now model slack when we remember how much slack there is. There's a little bit of like jutteriness there, but it's mostly pretty smooth now, and it's also much more um, realistic in that when I'm paying out the rope here, it doesn't push me downwards at all. It used to actually physically push you downwards. Now all it does is just extend the limit that I swing from and then I fall under gravity. And ditto for like retracting the rope. Um, 
it used to be just a constant speed upwards and then as soon as you release the key it would stop immediately that felt pretty good um, and previous iterations when I'd done like force based approaches those had way too much overshoot so when you stopped retracting you kept on flying towards the anchor that was a real problem but now you do just a like you have a tiny tiny bit of momentum when you stop retracting so I'm going to retract here and then I'm going to stop now and I just go a little bit higher I'm going to just do it like here is that going to work? yeah so I stop retracting now and there's just a little bit of a bounce and that feels okay I was like initially I was trying to avoid that but now that it's in there and it is it is a natural consequence of the physics <laughs> um, I quite like it as long as it's not shooting you way too high like if you were retracting your whole body weight with a grappling hook up the side of a building and then you stop suddenly you'd have this little moment of kind of <laughs> where you know you were being lifted upwards your momentum was still going upwards but you were just now starting to feel gravity pull you back down it would take like just a little bit of a second so the, with all that code in there the feel of the rope is much nicer now and it's much more kind of ropey <laughs> like it has um, slack it has um, just it doesn't it's no longer a rigid pole <laughs> and you feel that in kind of everything you do you like the fact that it bends around stuff is really nice and then the fact that it doesn't push you away from anything is really good and so when it does stop you from falling it kind of feels more convincing somehow because you know it's not just a completely artificial stick it's actually got a bit of ropiness to it so I'm pretty pleased with how that's shaping up um, obviously <laughs> one concern right now is that there's these big hovering planks in the middle of the um, sky and apart from those this is not too far off what the kind of buildings you'll be dealing with in the game might look like uh, you wouldn't have this many of them in a level I don't think it'd be more like gunpoint where there's like one or two buildings um, but you wouldn't have floating blocks in the sky for any reason but those are there because it's really fun to hang on to them <laughs> and I love playing around with it and I love doing um, like stuff that wraps you around it you know just like my rope kind of let me hang down further than it looked like it was going to there that's because I had some slack when I formed it so this thing these platforms make it more fun to play around with but they're not realistic they don't fit into my design for what the levels will look like so I need to think about that a bit I think the main reason they're there is because if you want to um, get on top of this building then it's quite tricky to kind of aim the grappling hook exactly at the corner and I did have a thing that would like assist you when you got close enough it would let you clamber up and I will have something like that probably but I've taken it out for now because it's behaving glitchily but even once you have that it's kind of annoying not to be able to just easily get to the top of the building I'm not totally sure what the solution to that will be but this is kind of the benefit of prototyping stuff is you realize hmm the sort of shape of the levels I was going to make don't fit the mechanic I was going to use and so there's probably just a really neat solution to that I have one in mind already but I'm not going to talk about it until I've tried it because it might be too much work and you know these aren't proper buildings yet they're just blocks <laughs> so who knows if that will even be a problem once I've made them into proper buildings but yeah that's about all I've got to show and I probably about as much as it makes sense to show of the code. So thanks for watching.